אל נקמות אדוני, אל נקמות הופיע. הנשא שופט הארץ, השב גמול על גאים. עד מתי רשעים אדוני? עד מתי רשעים יעלוזו? יביעו, ידברו עתק, יתאמרו כל פועלי אבן. עמך אדוני ידכאו ונחלתך יענו. אלמנה וגר יהרוגו ויתומים ירצחו. ויאמרו לא יראה יה ולא יבין אלוהי יעקב. Today is Holocaust Remembrance Day. Around the world, and across the Jewish world in particular, a time to commemorate the six million Jews systematically murdered by Nazi Germany, and a time to pay homage to those who survived a living nightmare. Survivors who live to tell us what they saw. I'm Nareet Ben, and we're here with a special broadcast of the International March of the Living. Today, we're turning to Poland after three years on hold due to the COVID pandemic. It's a defiant, silent march retracing the 3.2-kilometer journey from Auschwitz to Birkenau. The death march where over one million Jews were murdered en masse. But this is a march of the living. Leading it in 2022 will be just eight Holocaust survivors, and many of them say it's likely their last time making the journey. Alongside the survivors will be chairman of the Jewish Agency's Board of Governors, Michael Siegel, He'll be leading a global delegation of victims of anti-Semitism, people whose families were murdered simply for being Jewish or who themselves were harmed by anti-Semitic attacks. Walking side by side with them will be senior European police officers, part of a special project of the Miller Center at Rutgers University, a joint call to help put a stop to anti-Semitism. It's of course impossible to ignore the context of this year's march and the new symbolism it's taken on. All eyes are on Ukraine, on an enormous tragedy, on the unbearable sights and sounds. In the shadow of that war, a delegation of Ukrainian refugees will take part in the march, along with representatives of the Jewish National Fund, the Jewish Agency in Ukraine, and the Shalom Ministry, all of them actively involved right now in saving lives in Ukraine, Jews and non-Jews alike. Over the next two hours, thousands of people will embark on this three-kilometer march, Teenagers and adults, Jews and non-Jews, from over 25 different countries, including an interfaith delegation from the UK and an historic delegation from the United Arab Emirates. Together, they'll walk from the site of the Auschwitz extermination camps to Birkenau. That's near the camp's crematorium where over one million Jews met their death. Those who couldn't make it to the march this year, from Brazil to South Africa and from Australia to Argentina, will also be here with us, and we'll hear from them a bit later in the broadcast. Just minutes before the official ceremony gets underway in Birkenau, joining us is Chairman of the International March of the Living, Dr. Shmuel Rosenman. Shmuel, we're marching three years since the last march and in the shadow of the war in Ukraine. How would this affect the march, and will you address it on the ceremony this year? Thank you for your question. No doubt that we have to address it. No doubt that if around us it's a war, people being slaughtered and killed, we must address it. But I would like to emphasize it again and again. We are here marching to really to give the torch of memory from the survivors, okay, to the new generation, the second and the third generation. This is the Shoah, okay? We are not mixing between the Shoah and the atrocities that's going on here with the world. But at the same time, we are trying to emphasize that we have to destroy any way of evil, anti-Semitism, racism, so the message is going to be strong. And this is a strong impact, because if people thought that it's historical things only eight years ago, see what's going on here, just 150 kilometers from here. Okay, we will be joined today by people who are marching from 25 countries, including refugees from Ukraine, participants from Arab states. But this is a small march. What is the uniqueness of this march today? I would say the size of the march doesn't matter in this case, okay? Of course, we small march 
to compare what happened before due to the fact that Corona and the war, but to show the world that people are marching, Jews and non-Jews, refugees and Arabs, other people from all over the world, 25 different countries, shoulder to shoulder, okay? To show the world, once they will never forget, and number two, that we are ready to, to, together really, to fight against any way of what is called racism, Nazism, and anti-Semitism. We have a special delegation of the Jewish Agency with victims of anti-Semitism, joined by commis police commissioner, uh, sponsored by the Miller Center. What message do you hope this delegation will send out to the world from, he from here? I would like that people of the world and people of a good faith will understand that each one of them cannot be a bystander. Each one of them take the role, okay, to be active, fighting against all sorts of anti-Semitism, racism, and hatred. And now we'll turn it over live to Auschwitz-Birkenau to the official opening of the 2022 March of the Living. It was 34 years ago today. It was the very first time that we took this historic step from Auschwitz to Birkenau. A journey we called March of the Living. We marched then as an act of protest and defiance at a time when the world was washed in holocaust, denial, anti-Semitism, and racism. While our numbers back in 1988 were quite small, our resolve and our commitment were powerful, passionate, and steadfast. Today, on Yom HaZikaron LaShoah VeLagvura 2022, after the interruption of two years because of the global pandemic, we are once again resuming our sacred pilgrimage together with you. When we march this year under the dark shadow of the war in neighborhood Ukraine, now a tragic scene of immense human suffering. As we stand here today in Auschwitz-Birkenau, we must not turn a blind eye or a real deaf ear to their cries while the life of millions of innocent people, men, women, children, are in grave danger, only a few hundred miles away from here. We salute the leadership and the people of Poland for their remarkable efforts in helping millions of Ukraine refugees find shelter in Poland. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, how long will we march for? As long as anti-Semitism continue to be spread throughout the world. So, as we march this year, end in end, in our Holocaust survivors, with people of all ages, from different faiths and backgrounds, let us reaffirm our pledge from 34 years ago. Let us say in loud voice, no to those who spread the Holocaust denial, no to those who preach and practice war, hatred, violence, anti-Semitism, and racism. And let us say yes to those who advocate tolerance, love, and peace. So now, ladies and gentlemen, please join your hands and join your hearts together when we start to march in exactly two minutes. I'll ask the survivors if you can move and the rest of the group will stay. And after the blast, the shofar, sound of the shofar, we will march and we'll wait to my sign to start the march. We are marching from here to Birkenau, three a quarter kilometers, led by the leadership, the president of Poland, and the leadership which are part of the march of the living.
It's a somber reality that with each passing year, the number of Holocaust survivors is dwindling. And in the coming years, they'll no longer be able to march with us or to tell their stories themselves. As British survivor Eve Kugler recently put it, we are a rare breed. Today, she'll be marching for the 10th time, and she and other survivors are asking the third generation to carry on the memory for them, to make sure it continues to burn far into the future. Their call is being answered this year with a symbolic transfer of the torch of memory from the survivors who witnessed the horrors firsthand to the next generation. Soon, we, the Holocaust survivors, won't be here to tell our story. As a second generation born to a righteous among the nations. As a third generation descendant of Holocaust survivors. As a grandchild and a great grandchild of a Nazi family. We pledge to keep alive the memories of those dark times. In recent years, there has been a terrible surge in Holocaust denial. Each day, another memory is threatened, a lesson lost. It is up to all of us to keep the memory of the Holocaust alive. Join us in our fight against anti-Semitism and Holocaust denial. Visit nevermeansnever.com and join us in keeping Holocaust memory alive. Never means never. Never means never. Never means never. Never means never. Renee Salt was just a little girl when she arrived at Auschwitz, but she remembers everything. The journey in the packed train, the orchestra who played loudly to drown out the screams of people being murdered, the extreme violence, the awful overcrowding, and the pure fear. She never thought she'd survive, but she did. And over the last 12 years, Renee has been part of the UK March of the Living. Here's a glimpse at her incredible story from the New Take Films documentary, Why We March. Dawn was just breaking when the train slowed down and came to a stop. Immediately we heard dogs barking. They opened up the doors, they unbolted them, and when you looked outside, it seemed that an army of assessmen and Gestapo awaited the train, all heavily armed and with large guard dogs. The screaming and bellowing, get off the train, get a move on, be quick. My father jumped off, I jumped after him. By the time I jumped off, I didn't see him anymore. He disappeared like into thin air. I never saw him again. All around us was electrified, illuminated fencing, and above them stood a rank of high watchtowers. It was so terribly frightening. Guards moved in, shoving us into columns. Some of them whispered, you are now here in Auschwitz-Birkenau. This is the place where people are being taken straight into the guest chambers. That was our greeting. As we were walking, we had a beautiful orchestra playing, the best musicians they had picked out from all over Europe, sitting there playing in the middle of the camp. Why they, they were playing there, I don't know till today. Some people said that they were playing so that the people in the camp shouldn't hear the screaming coming out of the guest chambers. We were taken into a very large hall, told to strip, leave our clothes on the benches. Everyone had their heads shaved. They collected any valuables that anybody had. We were pushed into a very large room, which looked like a shower room. Everyone was saying prayers, hugging, kissing one another. We thought it was our last hour. But we were the lucky ones. They still needed us for very hard work. So water came through, not gas. A young woman, a strong woman, stood outside with a whip in her hand, and she said to us, I'm very small, but I can beat you up very hard. Don't forget. And she did keep her word. We were taken into one of these huts, like this one, we were sitting right in a row against the wall on both sides of the hut, on the stone floor. <clears throat> Five in a row. We are sitting there. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 
We're sitting in between each other's legs, packed like sardines. In this position, we had to sit day and night. Transports arrived to Auschwitz from all over Europe, mostly bringing with them up to 20,000 people. 60 to 80 percent of these people were straight into the guest chambers. After each incoming transport and each selection of the huts, you could see black smoke all over the place. And I see this sickly burning smell of flesh would drift across the whole area. I never believed I'll ever come out alive of here. When we arrived, they opened up the great doors and we were pushed through. The, the scene that met us is difficult to describe. Here we saw skeletons walking. Their arms and legs were like matchsticks. The bones protruding through their ragged remains of skin and their eyes bulged out grotesquely out of their skull-like faces. Some were dressed in rags, others were naked. While I was walking around the camp, I noticed two large hills in the distance. Not till I came near them did I realize that these hills were dead bodies piled up to heaven. There was no one to bury them. It was simply terrible. The stench that arose from the camp was simply unreal. We thought we were just pushed through the gates of hell. Joining us is President of the International March of the Living, Phyllis Heidemann. Phyllis, we're here after three years since our last march. How does it feel to be here today? For us to be here in Auschwitz-Birkenau, marching again in memory of our ancestors, in tribute to our survivors, has us each running a range of emotions. We are warmed, we are fulfilled, we are grateful that we were able to overcome all the obstacles put in our way and that we were able to return here and fulfill our mission to engage, to educate, and to remember our past as we each face the future. It is a surreal experience to be here and I believe that everyone who is marching with us today will tell you it's a very historic very special and very meaningful International March of the Living. Phyllis, we will be led today by eight Holocaust survivors. We got used to many of them accompanied us through the years. What is this year's theme? And please tell us about the survivors. The survivors who are with us today are some of the most special people on this planet. It is to them that we dedicate all of our respect, our pride, and our honor. We have come here this year to explain to the world that as the world is facing the last survivors pass from amongst us, it is our opportunity, our obligation, our responsibility to pass the torch of memory the torch of leadership and the torch of commitment to the next generation. Each one of us here today from the older generation as I am is here to say to the next generation, please help us, help the future, help the future of society everywhere by accepting the mantle of leadership, the mantle of memory, and the mantle of remembrance. As you face a very uncertain and very difficult future, we ask you to remember the past, learn the lessons that happened here in Auschwitz-Birkenau, and provide a better world for your children. Phyllis, there are many International March of the Living groups who are not here with us today. They are watching us from all over the world and I would like you to say something to our very dear friends or should I say family across the world. To all of you who for a myriad of reasons could not join us this year on this journey of remembrance. I as the President of the International March of the Living on behalf of all the board, all the leadership, tell you that we miss you, we love you, we will carry you in our hearts as we make this traditional march, and we look forward to 2023 when you will be here with us physically, spiritually, intellectually, all in the name of memory, 
and those who came before us. Thank you very much, President Heidemann. And now we'll turn it over live to Auschwitz-Birkenau. Gidon Lev spent part of his childhood in the Theresienstadt camp in the Czech Republic. In a candid interview, he told us about his memories, the severe hunger, the violence, and the daily fear. Gidon lost no less than 26 of his family members in the Holocaust. And the video you're about to see, he asks all of us to learn the lessons from one of the darkest periods in history, and most of all, to keep telling survivor stories. אני איבדתי בשואה 26 בני משפחה לפחות. כולם לא חזרו, חוץ מאימא ואני. טריזנשטט היה בעצם מחנה מאוד מיוחד. זה בעצם היה מחנה מעבר. זה לא היה מחנה מוות. למרות שאני אומר את זה, מתו שם בארבע שנים יותר מ-33 אלף אנשים. לקחו את סבא ואבא שלי למחנה, ושבועיים אחרי זה, אפילו פחות, עשרה ימים אחרי זה, גם אימא ואני קיבלנו הודעה. וכאשר שאלנו, אז מתי אנחנו נראה את אבא, סבא? אמרו, כן, מחר בבוקר. מחר בבוקר תסתכלו מי החלונות. בבוקר בשש ילדים כבר קמו ורצו לחלונות וראינו, ראינו את, את, את הגברים צועדים לעבודה בשורות של חמש עד עשר עם חיילים גרמנים שומרים עליהם ואפילו לא יוכלו להסתכל למעלה אל החלונות. צעקתי, אבא, אבא, אבא. אנסט, אנסט. הוא לא הסתכל. ראיתי אותו, הוא לא הסתכל. אם אתם יכולים לדמיין לעצמכם להיות רעבים מבוקר עד ערב ומערב עד לבוקר, רעבים כל הזמן. חיינו על פרוסת לחם אחת קערה של מרק מבוסס על כל רבי או על, על תפוחי אדמה או על, על משהו. כל אחד מאיתנו חיפשנו איכשהו להתקיים, לחיות. ילדים לא אוהבים, לא רוצים למות. אנחנו לא חשבנו על מוות. לפעמים אפילו שיחקנו בתוך הבניין, בחצר. יכולנו לשחק, אז שיחקנו עם כדורים. איזה כדור? לא היו, לא נתנו לנו כדור רגל רגיל. אז לקחנו בגדים ישנים, חתכנו אותם לחתיכות ארוכות כאלה, וגלגלנו עד שקיבלנו כדור, שיחקנו עם הכדור שעה, חצי שעה, עד שהוא התפרק, ונגמר המשחק. נגמר הכדור, נגמר המשחק. 
בארבעים וארבע, אבא שלי קיבל הודעה להופיע בתחנה רכבת, הוא נשלח למזרח. אנשים במחנה לא ידעו על אושוויץ. הם ידעו אושוויץ, אבל לא ידעו על תאי גזים וכיתות ו- ירי. לא ידעו. ידעו שזה יהיה גרוע. לא ידעו שלרוב מחכה מוות. אז הוא נשלח. אימא שלי אמרה, mm-hmm. לא, תישאר כאן, אני, אני רואה את אבא שם בחלון שקטן. אז הוא, הוא זרק חבילה קטנה בנייר עטוף, שני דברים. את התמונה של אימא שלי, שהוא החזיק אצלו כל הזמן, שהוא היה במחנה, ואת זה, מה שאתם רואים, זה הסמל של טרזינשטט, סמל העיר. וזרק את זה לאימא, ואימא תפסה את זה וברחה, כי חייל גרמני עמד לראות בה. אבל מה קרה לו אחר כך? אין יותר לדעת. בכדי שדברים כאלה לא יקרו בשום מקום, בשום צורה, נגד אף קבוצה של אנשים, אנחנו צריכים להיות כל הזמן מודעים לסכנות אלה ולהיאבק נגד. אין כל כך הרבה מאיתנו כבר בחיים, ואנחנו צריכים ללמד, לספר, לא את הסיפור הגדול עם הרציחות והתאי גזי, אלא החלק האנושי, האישי, וכל דבר שהוא אישי, הוא מתקשר עם האנשים שאנחנו מדברים אליהם, וזה אתם והצירים. As part of Holocaust survivors' plea to keep their memories alive, the March of the Living has come out with a special campaign aimed at gathering and preserving their testimonies. Take a look. Soon, we, the Holocaust survivors, won't be here to tell our story. Even now, our collective voice grows fainter. Now it is up to us to tell the stories of the victims of the Holocaust. It is up to us to make sure that their stories won't become faded memories. It is up to us to give the victims a voice. It is up to us to prevent history from being rewritten. It is up to us to fight anti-Semitism and Holocaust denial. Go to nevermeansnever.com. Together, we will keep the memory of the victims and survivors of the Holocaust alive. Eitan Neishlos is the grandson of Tamara Zisserman, who survived the death pits thanks to a Christian family. The Chodosevich family hid her and paid for it with their lives. Over seven decades later, Eitan embarked on a global journey for his grandmother's memory, one that culminates today in the March of the Living. For nearly 40 years, I've been searching for my Jewish identity. I grew up in a Russian, Hebrew, English home, very Zionistic and also very Jewish. But all my life, I felt there is something missing. <laughs> Today, I board a plane and begin a journey to close a lifelong circle of a journey that began long time ago in Israel, then in South Africa, from there to Australia, now to Jerusalem. on my way to London, and finally, to the March of the Living in Poland. None of this would have happened without my dear grandmother, Tamara, who was so dear to me. She never said a word to me about her dreadful experience at the Holocaust, so I've made it my mission to find out. My journey begins in my parents' home. 
I know my mother knows my grandmother's story. Many third generation Holocaust survivors don't know their grandparents' stories. My grandmother never spoke about her story and many grandparents did not, could not speak. My only source for information is my mother. She has my grandmother's memoir and today she will share it with me for the first time as I'm starting my journey on the March of the Living. That is the full recording of my mom and your grandmother's story. The most important part of this story for my mother was to recognize Hadasevich family, the family who saved her life. No, I все ушли в этот день, значит, когда туда всех согнали, это уже потом рассказывали очевидцы. Там уже были и полицейские, а там и пулеметы, и автоматы, и собаки, и машины из Минска. Ну и никто, конечно, домой не вернулся. I will take this shoebox and its contents to Yad Vashem and to Auschwitz, and I pray that we will inspire a generation of upstanders, that may we all be righteous amongst the nations. I'm so excited to depart to Israel. My first stop will be Yad Vashem in Jerusalem. I must visit there, and especially the righteous among the nations. I want to pay a tribute to my grandmother's saviors. As I stepped into the Valley of Communities and saw the scripture engraved in the stones, surrounding me as I walked among the names of the thousands of towns and villages that were captured by the Nazis, for the first time, I felt the scale of destruction and suffering of all the Jews who lived in these communities and the scale of suffering that my grandmother endured. When I arrived at the stone commemorating Minsk, rain started drizzling down on my face. I looked up at the sky and realized that I am now responsible for taking my grandmother's story to the next generation and honoring the Chodosevich family and righteous among the nation's families who risked their lives to save countless Jewish lives. I continued walking down the path of commemoration and all of a sudden, there it was, the wall with the name of the Chodosevich family, righteous amongst the nations. A sense of overwhelm dawned upon me. I owe my life to them, and now I owe a duty to pass the torch to the third generation and the future generations to come. I am forever grateful to them. We are now in one of the most special places, in my view, in the world, because you have here 200 million documents about the darkest chapter in human history, for sure in Jewish history. I want to show you this documentation about your family, about the Nauschloss family in Riga, Latvia. Those are the identity card and passports of your family, the Latvian yes. identity cards yeah, I recognize this face. You recognize this picture? Yeah. So you have here really, it's on paper because they perished, but it's really living uh, testimonies of your family in Latvia. It's uh, very moving for me and um, it will be very moving for my family. So these tears are from all of us and it's tears of gratitude. Thank you. My final stop in my journey of commemoration is Auschwitz-Birkenau. This journey and my grandmother's story will stay with me forever. I will leave grandma's box of memories open. It is a living, 
breathing memory of our people, to remember and never to forget. At the official ceremony in Birkenau getting underway shortly, Eitan will light the torch of the third generation in memory of his grandmother and all other grandmothers murdered in the Holocaust. He'll be joined this year by Ahmed Obaid al-Mansouri, founder of the very first Holocaust Memorial Gallery in the Arabic and Islamic world in the United Arab Emirates. As we've all experienced, the COVID pandemic brought many things to a complete halt over the last couple of years, but not to anti-Semitism, which has only intensified in global crisis. It's a pattern seen across history again and again and again. As we mentioned this year, for the first time, a special delegation from the Jewish Agency, led by the chairman of the Board of Governors, Michael Siegel, is marching in Auschwitz-Birkenau. With him will be victims of anti-Semitism from France, the United States, Germany, the UK, and Israel. Among them, Anthony Feinberg, who lost his mother Joyce in the deadly anti-Semitic attack on the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh in 2018. Margarita Pali, a pro-Israel activist from Germany who experienced anti-Semitism growing up. Lasry Pierre, whose daughter survived the attack on the Or Hatura school in Toulouse in 2012. And Goldie Orta, whose mother, Norma Schwarzblatt Rabinovich, was killed in the Mumbai terrorist attacks in 2008. We got a chance to talk to all of them before they set off for the March of the Living. On October 27th, 2018, a lone gunman entered the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And over a period of about an hour, uh, killed 11 people. Among the 11 victims, I knew seven of which three since a very young age, and one of those three was my mother. I remember experiencing anti-Semitism was when I was in the eighth grade. So I was in the age of 12 or 13, and I was sitting in the class waiting for the class to start, and the teacher um, is entering, and it's a history class. And she's introducing her speech, was asking in front of the whole, uh, of the whole people, asking, Margarita, tell us what would have happened to you right now if we would be in the year 1938. And this is how she introduced the class in the eighth grade to the topic of the Holocaust. The only answer I gave by that time was um, saying I, was, I would be dead or not here. Then the next time I remember, um, was when I was 16, I was in the Jewish youth camp and we had a um, memorial ceremony in, Fried uh, in Friedrichstraße for the kinder transport. And I remember it was a very emotional uh, ceremony and then there were a homeless person who just passed by uh, saying like Heil Hitler and all these things. But this was like also a trigger for me to understand where I'm living. like me living in Germany as a Jewish person. It was also the first time I understood what it means to be Jewish. And from this moment on, I also started to wear my Star of David. It's kind of sad understanding that we as a people went through this kind of thing, but we are still not, like it's still not over. That anti-Semitism is still there and we see where it can lead to. We are, Baruch Hashem, are fighting it. But in the end, it's not only on our hands. J'étais président des parents d'élèves en 2012, quand les événements se sont déroulés ici. Et j'avais une de mes filles, la dernière de mes quatre enfants, qui était scolarisée ici. À un moment, on le voit prendre son, son revolver et dégainer, mais comme un, dans un, dans, au, au cinéma. Je suis venu sur les lieux et j'ai vu, euh, vu l'horreur euh, sous mes yeux. Et quand je suis arrivé, j'ai vu Jonathan, un adulte, quoi, le, le papa du petit Gabriel, et son fils, euh, là, sur le trottoir. Rien n'est complètement comme avant, mais c'est en nous. On a retrouvé la vie, on a retrouvé la vie, voilà. Même si plus rien n'est comme avant. Aujourd'hui non plus, dix ans après, je peux vous affirmer que plus rien n'est comme avant. Il y a 
קצת משנה, אני הייתי ביפן בחילופי סטודנטים. בתום סוף השבוע חזרתי וקיבלתי אימייל מדודה שלי מארצות הברית, ששאלה אותי אם דיברתי עם אימא שלי. מאוד התפלאתי כי לא, לא ידעתי על שום דבר, לא, לא ראיתי חדשות, אז לא כל כך אה, אה, שמעתי. בית חב"ד היו סך הכל שישה, טוב, נגיד שמונה אנשים בפנים. כמות המשאבים שנכנסו אה, כדי להרוג שישה יהודים, <laughs> זה לא מוסבר על ידי שום דבר אחר חוץ מזה שהם היו יהודים. אני משתתפת במצעד החיים אה, השנה, יחד עם אה, עוד קורבנות של אנטישמיות, כדי להגיד לעולם וכדי להגיד ל... אנשים שחושבים שאלימות זו הדרך, הזכות לחיות ולהתקיים איך שאנחנו ומי שאנחנו, כל עוד זה לא פוגע באותה זכות אצל אנשים אחרים, זה צריך להיות ערך עליון. This last September marked the 80th anniversary of the Babinyar massacre in Ukraine. In just two days, about 34,000 people, nearly all of Kiev's Jews, were shot to death and thrown into a ravine. Now amid the war in Ukraine, the Babinyar Holocaust Memorial Center in Kiev, in the midst of establishing a major memorial center, has halted all its activities. Instead of working on history, its staff is busy with the present day, saving the lives of Holocaust survivors and a civilian population under brutal attack. The story you'll hear now is about Paulina Duchenko Lifshitz. Her uncle Moshe and her grandparents, Noah and Sofia Duchenko, were all murdered in that massacre. In September, before the war in Ukraine, we talked to Paulina as she came to the memorial site that today stands desolate. There, she read a letter written to her murdered relatives. No, Sofia, my say. My dedus, my prababusia, and my two year old dedus. 80 years ago, Вас тут вбили. Буквально через кілька днів після окупації Києва нацистами. Тут, у Бабиному Яру, сталося найжорстокіше вбивство, скоєне нацистами. Ви дізналися, що вас можуть застрелити в Бабиному Яру. В останній момент дві невістки залишились вдома зі своїми дітьми. Дідусю, ти сказав, що якщо все буде добре, і вас справді відправлять працювати до Німеччини, ви повернетесь і заберете сім'ю. Але бабуся більше тебе не побачила. Ви опинились в черзі на вбивство, оголені і перелякані, знаючи, що це кінець. Вас і майже все єврейське населення Києва холоднокровно розстріляли. Мені так важко стояти сьогодні тут, у Бабиному Яру, знаючи, що ти, ну і мій дідусь, архітектор, лише 32 років міг будувати будівлі та життя навколо цього місця. Натомість я сьогодні стою тут, як нащадок єврейської родини, слухаю голоси Києва перед відною, закриваю очі і намагаюся уявити, яким було б моє життя і життя багатьох людей, якби вбивства у Бабиному Яру та Голокусту не відбулося. Я молюся за вас сьогодні і молюся за пам'ять про всіх євреїв, які були вбиті в Шоа. In the face of the horrors unfolding right now in Ukraine, several organizations have stepped in, getting involved in rescues, assisting refugees, and providing medical equipment, food, and more. Among those at the forefront are the Jewish Agency for Israel, the Jewish National Fund, and the Shalom Ministry, all taking part in the March of the Living today. I never imagined that in the 21st century, it will be real war. Real war with bombs? I'm so proud to be here with our teams who are working 24-7, working here on the ground in the last two weeks to literally save the lives. Save the lives of thousands of our brothers and sisters, Jews who are fleeing out of Ukraine under fire from the war zone to six different 
border stations and facilities that we have formed in order to help them save their lives. מאות אלפים מבני עמנו שחוטפים כעת הפגזות על בתיהם. אנחנו בסוכנות היהודית עומדים לצידם, גם בהוצאה שלהם את הגבולות וגם בהבאה שלהם כאן. When the war started, we needed to leave everything behind and start a long, scary journey. Finally, we arrived to Israel, and here we are welcomed with a big hug, and now we're having a great time here in Nesrim, with all the help of everyone around us. Before he departed for Poland as part of the Jewish National Fund delegation, we caught up with Avraham Duvdevani, chairman of Keren Kayemet Israel, the Jewish National Fund. Here's what he told us about assisting Ukraine's Jews, strengthening Jewish communities, and the unique box he's taking with him to Poland. Avraham Duvdevani, Yosef Rosh Keren Kayemet Israel, Toda Rabah, Shabbat Shalom Rav. אתם כבר כמה שבועות עוזרים ליהודי אוקראינה בתוך הטרגדיה הנוראית הזאת. אני בטוחה שיצא לך לשמוע לא מעט סיפורים. יש משהו שחתם אותך, שנשאר איתך מכל הסיפורים האלה? אני אגיד לך. לפני כמה שנים יצא לי לבקר באוקראינה. ביקרנו במספר בתי יתומים. התרגשנו מאוד. לילדים שעולמם חרב עליהם, או שההורים הפקירו אותם, או שנפרדו מהם, או שהם היו בסיכון, ונתנו להם שם את המיטב שבמיטב. והנה זכינו שקרן קיימת ערכה, לקחה על עצמה לארח במרכז החינוכי שלנו בנס ערים את כל בית המיתומים מיזיתומים. ואתה יודע מה הם איבדו שם. אתה יודע מה כבר עבר עליהם לפני כן, ומה הם איבדו. כשהם ירדו מהאוטובוסים בנס ערים, אף עין לא נשארה יבשה. זה היה מרגש הדמעות, ילדים מגיל שלוש עד גיל שש עשרה, ושיהיה להם רק טוב עד שהם יחזרו חזרה לשם. באופן כללי, השנה אתה הולך לצעוד כמובן עם קרן קיימת לישראל, שמאה עשרים שנה מציינת השנה. ובכל העולם יש את הקופסה הכחולה הזאת, קופסה קטנה כחולה שיהודים ברחבי העולם מזהים. אבל אני רואה שיש לך פה קופסה מיוחדת, עם סיפור מיוחד. תספר לנו מה זה. זה, הקופה הזו מצאנו אותה בחורבות גטו ורשה, <אח> אחרי המשוב. קופה כחולה שהייתה באחד הבתים. אם אנחנו גם מסתכלים שוב אחורה, לפני השואה לקרן קיימת לישראל היה תפקיד די גדול בחינוך ציוני. ואז עוד יותר אפילו אחרי השואה בלחזק את ה... לחזק יהודים, ב... בלעזור להם להגיע לישראל. היום מה אתה רואה כמשימה כה... המרכזית של קרן, קרן קיימת לישראל? המטרה והמשימה העיקרית נשארה אותה משימה 120 שנה. זה לבנות את הארץ, לפתח אותה. התיישבות, פיתוח, תושבים, איכות סביבה, כל זה נשאר הדבר העיקרי, כי זו התרומה הממשית של קרן קיימת לאחר קום המדינה. אברהם דובדבני, תודה רבה. כל טוב ובשורות טובות. In 1942, פאני עבאס, a Ukrainian Jew, hid in the forest, overcome with fear, and certain she would meet her death. But she was rescued by the Kotsubailo family and sent to a nearby home to a woman named Maria. So what happened to her next? We'll let Fania and Maria's granddaughters tell you themselves. As Russia continues its vicious attacks on the people of Ukraine, more than three million refugees have left from their homes. And this morning, we have a truly remarkable story of immeasurable kindness repaid over generations to two Ukrainian refugees. During World War II, Maria Blitschik sheltered and saved the life of Fania Rosenfeld Bass, a Ukrainian Jew. Mm-hmm. 
אני לובה, בת של מריה, חסידת אומות העולם, שהצילה את פניה, סבתא של שרון. The connection between Fania, my grandmother, and Maria, the daughter of Conan and Anna Calote, was really special. The whole family accepted her like their own daughter. My grandmother was the sole survivor of her family, found refuge in this house for two years. My grandmother remember that for the rest of her life. We reconnected. My grandmother found uh, this family again. זו מריה, וזו סבתא שלי. In 1995, my grandmother uh, brought them to Israel to be called the righteous among the nations by Yad Vashem. My grandmother, she got sick and needed someone to take care of her. And from then on, Luba, for 17 years almost, took care of her like her own mother. והיה קשר מאוד חזק. ותמיד אמרתי לפניה, פניה את, אמא שלי. והיא גם קיבלה אותי כמו בת, דאגה עוד בשבילי ובשביל משפחה שלנו. זה קשר שהוא כבר... החיים של כולנו שזורים אחד בתוך השני 80 שנה. Because we kept in touch all the time, we heard about the difficult situation over there and the worries. So uh, we decided to help them to come here to be safe. Two uh, granddaughters of the Colotta family, Alona and Lesia, and there are three more girls that are coming now, even though it's, you know, like little bits of what they gave to my grandmother. It was the least we could do. My grandmother was a kind of person that always helped others. Her main uh, wish was that we will take care of this family. So I think that up there she's proud that we're continuing our legacy. And now we'll turn it over live to Auschwitz-Birkenau. From Budapest, Weiss Reserve. Up until the COVID pandemic, every year saw groups from over 40 different nations taking part in the International March of the Living, from Australia to Panama, from South Africa to Japan. This year, not all could make the trip to Poland, but instead are joining us from wherever they are around the world. My name is Eric Lippitz. I'm from Parkland, Florida, USA. I'm going on the march in memory of my grandfather, David Lippitz, who passed away in Auschwitz 
who was murdered in Auschwitz. And I want everybody to know exactly what happened during those horrible years of the Holocaust. And I, by learning what happened, it will never happen again to you. Learn and do and work and study against evil. Eu sou Débora Schaff e estou marchando com vocês hoje do Rio de Janeiro, Brasil, Colégio Lies. Estou marchando junto a todos os judeus do mundo porque eu acredito que é muito importante manter a memória do Holocausto viva para que jamais seja esquecida. Estou marchando também em memória ao sobrevivente brasileiro do Holocausto, Egon Stern. Assim, eu me comprometo a manter a memória da história dos sobreviventes do Holocausto viva. I'm Israel Hai. My name is Esther. I'm marching from Melbourne, Australia. I'm marching in the memory of my family who, who died in the Holocaust. I'm Ellie, Bubba's granddaughter. Never means never. We will do all we can to fight injustices and anti-Semitism around the world. Yehi Zichron Baruch. My name is Frida Harari and I march with you today from Panama City, Panama. Yo hoy marcho por aquellos jóvenes que no pudieron cumplir con sus sueños y metas que tenían propuestos, por aquellos niños que no tuvieron una infancia y por aquellos padres que no pudieron ver a sus hijos crecer. Yo también marcho por los sobrevivientes, aquellas personas que lucharon para mantenerse con vida y tienen que vivir con esos recuerdos todos los días, para recordar y nunca olvidar. I am taking responsibility to keep memory alive so that the story of Holocaust survivors lives on. My name is Nate Leipziger. I'm a Holocaust survivor from Toronto, Canada. I'm marching in memory of six million innocent Jewish people who were murdered in the Shoah. Had Israel existed 20 years earlier, the Shoah would not have happened. That is why it is important to go on the March of the Living to remind us of that fact. My name is Daniela and I march with you from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Marcho para luchar contra el antisemitismo. Tenemos la responsabilidad de transmitir la historia de los sobrevivientes y mantener viva la memoria de las víctimas. A Israel Hay. In just a few minutes, the March of the Living will come to its end, and the official ceremony for Holocaust Remembrance Day will begin in Birkenau, at the foot of the crematorium, where more than one million Jews were burned to death. Like every year, six torches will be lit in memory of the six million Jews murdered. Lighting them this year will be Holocaust survivors, along with the chairman of the Jewish Agency Board of Governors, Michael Siegel. Next to him will be Howard Feinberg, son of the late Joyce Feinberg, murdered in the attack on Pittsburgh's Tree of Life Synagogue in 2018, and Miri Benzeev Koren, whose husband Eli Benzeev was murdered in the 1994 bombing of the Israeli embassy in Buenos Aires. Also lighting a torch will be Eitan Naishlos, a third-generation Holocaust survivor, grandson of Tamara Zisserman. With him from the UAE, Ahmed Obed Al-Mansouri, founder of the very first Holocaust Memorial Gallery in the Arabic and Islamic world. The two will light a torch together to symbolize the hope and reconciliation of the third generation. Also among them will be Avraham Duvdevani, chairman of Karen Kayemet Lisrael, a strategic partner of the March of the Living, lighting a torch for the revival of the State of Israel. And finally, representatives of global March of the Living groups. Others include Mayor of Jerusalem, Moshe Leon, President of the March of the Living, Phyllis Heidemann, IDF Chief Cantor, Shai Abramson, and Israeli musician, Harel Scott. And in just minutes from now, the official ceremony will get underway. So we'll stop here and turn live to Birkenau. Good afternoon. My name is Greg Maisel, and on behalf of the International March of the Living, I want to thank you for attending this afternoon's Yom HaShoah ceremony. As is the custom, please refrain from applauding 
during this solemn ceremony. Today is Holocaust Remembrance Day, a day of sacred remembrance observed by Jewish communities all over the world. Close to 300,000 alumni of the March of the Living have marched here for over 34 years. And today, for the first time since the outbreak of the global pandemic in early 2020, thousands of people have once again assembled here to take part in the March of the Living, from Auschwitz to Birkenau, the largest Jewish graveyard in the world, in commemoration of the six million Jews and the millions of other innocent victims murdered in Europe during the Shoah. B7608, this was our name and this was our number. I was only known by the number. Between February 1942 in December 1942, 600,000 Jews were murdered. Young people, old people, children from all over Europe. I never had one day that I was happy here. All the time it was vicious and starvation. It was horrendous. The children crying and the mother screaming, Almighty God, help us, still ring in my ears today. Sharing our stories, it's keeping the history alive. Just for a few minutes, I had this surreal feeling of, of standing here and talking about all the people that lived here. It's no good living with hate. It doesn't help you. You eat yourself up. What was done can be undone, unfortunately. And we only hope that nothing like this will happen again. It doesn't matter what religion they are, what race they are. Whoever comes to me and needs help, I will help. And this is basically my way of living. Surviving is a gift. And what I do with that gift is to share the story because it makes a difference to people to hear it directly from us. The video that you have just seen was taken from New Take Films, who joined our survivors in Poland for a moving documentary called Why We March. I would like to welcome the seven Holocaust survivors who are on the stage from the United Kingdom and who are with us this year as we light the Iskol torch, the torch of memory. Arik Hirsch, Alfred Garwood, Agnes Kaposi, Mala Tribich, Eve Kugler, Harry Olmer, and Barbara Frankis. Thank you. Thank you for your bravery and courage and for keeping the torch of Holocaust memory alive. They will be accompanied on the stage by Dr. Shmuel Rosenman, Chair of the International March of the Living, who will recite the Yiskor in Hebrew. Please rise. Iskor Elohim et nishmot achenu bnei Yisrael chalalei ha-shoa v'giboreha nishmot 600 ribevot alfei Yisrael sheumtu v'shenehergu v'shenehneku v'shenegberu ha-im v'et kilot ha-kodesh shenehrevu al gdushat Hashem. יזכור אלוהים את עקדתם עם עקדת שאר קדושי ישראל וגיבוריו מימי עולם ויצרור בצרור החיים את נשמתם 
הנאהבים והנעימים בחייהם ובמותם לא נפרדו. ינוחו בשלום על משכבם ונאמר אמן. May God remember the souls of our brothers and sisters, the children of Israel, the victims of the Holocaust and its heroes, the souls of six million Jews who were murdered, suffocated, buried alive, and the holy communities martyred, sanctifying God's name. May God remember their sacrifice together with the remainder of Israel from generations past. May their souls be bound in the bonds of life, beloved and cherished in their lives, in their deaths. They were not parted. May they rest in peace and let us all say, Amen. Thank you all. The March of the Living would like to recognize the immeasurable suffering that is taking place not far from here in neighboring Ukraine, where thousands of innocent civilians have been killed or wounded and millions have become refugees overnight. We encourage you all to assist the people of Ukraine during this international humanitarian crisis as many have already done. At this point, I would like to recognize President Andrzej Duda, President of the Republic of Poland, who is attending today's march and whose country is leading the global effort in assisting refugees from Ukraine. I would also like to acknowledge the presence I would also like to acknowledge the presence of a number of Ukrainian refugees who are joining us today on the march. Please rise for a minute of silence for the victims of the war in Ukraine. Please be seated. I would now like to call upon Phyllis Greenberg Heidemann, President of the International March of the Living, to address you on behalf of the organization. Your Excellency President Duda, our precious survivors, our honored dignitaries, our dear friends, we are graced today by your presence. On Yom HaShoah 1988, and almost every year thereafter, leadership of the International March of the Living gather here on these hallowed grounds 
They come to bear witness. They come to honor the past. They come from countries around the globe and they speak every language known to mankind. But as they gather here in Auschwitz-Birkenau, they speak only one language. That, my friends, is the language of memory. And this is the language in which I hope to speak to you today. Much of our global leadership is unable, for several reasons, to join us today. They are unable to bring their students to accompany them on our journey of memory. But I know that they are watching us virtually. And to each of you around the globe, I say, hello, shalom, hola, jizen bilbri, salam, a guten tag, ciao, bonjour, good day, sveki, konnichiwa, yasu, alo, salo, and shalom alechem. These languages of hello represent the countries where our delegates are usually joined with us, encompassing these entire grounds. We miss them. As the very proud president of this emotionally motivated and time-tested organization, driven by the memory of those who never left this place or so many others like it, I am honored and I am humbled to represent our chairman, our founders, our board of directors, and each and every one of our most beloved survivors, devoted leaders, educators, clergy, alumni, chaperones, and guides from around the globe to make this promise on their behalf, on our collective behalf. We will always remember and we will always stand united in our mission to honor the past as we embrace the future. I believe that it is incumbent upon each one of us to look to the past as we prepare to face tomorrow. Learning the lessons of history is an important step in accepting social responsibility, moral responsibility to the future. That giant step is not always easy, especially in the face of rampant anti-Semitism, bigotry, hatred, and all forms of discrimination. But perhaps, just perhaps, we should consider this. If it were easy, everyone would do it. And we know that everyone does not undertake the privilege to serve. While we recognize that everyone does not strive to host the mantle of memory, bear the title of torchbearer, or even promote peace amongst the peoples of the world, our leadership, our colleagues, and our alumni have pledged to do all they can do to be agents of change, agents of good, and agents of memory. The International March of the Living is proud to embrace, to engage, and to educate those who will carry on as the next generation of leaders of society. Even today, under the current humanitarian crisis surrounding us, we have kept our promise to those on whose shoulders we stand. Not a global pandemic nor a raging war will deter our honored role as torchbearers of memory. Nor our commitment to our ancestors who rest here. We shall not forget you. To those blessed who, to survive and share with us your stories, your lessons, we thank you. We shall remember your words of wisdom, your guidance, your unsurpassed strength, and we shall always remember you. Today, on Yom HaShoah 2022, we, 
the older generations of leaders, not just of the March of the Living, but of all society. Invite the next generation to accept your social and your collective responsibility to inherit, to embrace, and to proudly carry the torch of memory into the future, as together we will face the unknowns of tomorrow. It is you who can change the course of history. It is you, the next generation, who must become voices for the witnesses. It is you on whom the future rests. In each of your hands, you hold the magic, the magic to make a difference. On behalf of the International March of the Living, I wish the next generation Bahatzlacha. May you go from strength to strength and lead this world into an even better place. Thank you. I would now like to invite President Andrzej Duda, President of the Republic of Poland, to the stage to address us. He will be accompanied by Dr. Shmuel Rosenman. Czcigodni ocalali, wielce szanowna pani prezes, panie przewodniczący Marszu Żywych, wielce szanowny panie burmistrzu Jerozolimy wraz z małżonką, ekscelencje, czcigodni rabini, wszyscy dostojni przybyli goście, wielce szanowni uczestniczy Marszu Żywych, w tym nasi drodzy przyjaciele z Ukrainy. Wszyscy szanowni państwo. Honorable survivors, distinguished Madam President, distinguished Mr. Chairman of the March of the Living, distinguished Mr. Mayor of Jerusalem, along with your spouse, excellencies, distinguished rabbis, distinguished guests, esteemed participants of the March of the Living, our dear guests from Ukraine, ladies and gentlemen. Wymowa tego wydarzenia, jakim jest Marsz Żywych, jest niezwykle poruszająca. Jest the, zawsze bardzo głębokim przeżyciem. The significance of this event which is the March of the Living, is extremely moving. It is always a very deep and profound experience. Ale zarazem, choć temu marszowi zawsze towarzyszy zaduma i żałoba, jest to jednak wydarzenie życia. Jest to wydarzenie zwycięstwa życia. But also, although this march is always invariably accompanied by reflection and mourning, this is the march of life. This is the victory of life. Ci, którzy idą w tym marszu, pokazują, że nawet najgorszy totalitaryzm, jakim był niemiecki hitleryzm, nazizm, który chciał zniszczyć, wymordować cały naród żydowski, i zniszczyć tysiące, dziesiątki innych narodów nie jest w stanie zwyciężyć woli życia i woli trwania. Those walking in this march show that even the worst totalitarianism, even the worst Hitler Nazism is not able to destroy, it is not able to murder the entire nation, just as it is not able to destroy and annihilate other nations, that the willingness to leave is something that is overwhelming. Idąc tu między wami z obozu Auschwitz do obozu Birkenau, czułem głęboką odpowiedzialność reprezentacji polskiego narodu i Polaków, także w tym znaczeniu historycznym. 
And when I was walking among you from Auschwitz to Birkenau, I felt a very deep and profound sense of responsibility while representing the Polish nation and Poles also from the perspective of history. Polaków także i w tym państwowym administracyjnym tego słowa znaczeniu, po prostu polskich obywateli. Poles also in the administrative state sense of the word, simply speaking the citizens of Poland, Polish citizens. Bo trzeba pamiętać że tutaj w obozie zagłady Auschwitz-Birkenau ginęli polscy obywatele narodowości żydowskiej, ale oczywiście także i narodowości polskiej. W sumie w czasie II wojny światowej Polska, moja ojczyzna straciła 6 milionów obywateli z czego ponad 3 miliony obywateli to byli polscy Żydzi. Polscy Żydzi bezlitośnie mordowani przez nazistów. But I also need to remind you and one needs to bear in mind that here in the Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camp uh, Polish citizens, uh, citizens of Jewish nations uh, but all citizens of Polish nation as well were those who perished. And all in all, during the Second World War, Poland lost six million citizens. And among that number, more than three million Polish Jews who were ruthlessly murdered by the Nazi Germans. Szedł ze mną dzisiaj, czy może odwrotnie, ja szedłem dzisiaj obok pana Edwarda Mosberga. który urodził się w Krakowie, tak jak 47 lat później ja, też urodzony w Krakowie, niedaleko stąd. I dlatego, tylko dlatego, że urodził się w żydowskiej rodzinie, tylko dlatego, że jest polskim Żydem, niemieccy naziści postanowili odebrać mu życie i jako młodego chłopca wraz z rodziną zamknęli go w obozie koncentracyjnym po to, by go zabić. And today I walked here, I walked next to Mr. Edward Mosberg. Edward Mosberg, who was born in Krakow, at the same city that I was born in 47 years later. It is close from here. And he was brought here along with his family to this camp only because he was born in a Jewish family only because he was Polish Jew. Only for that reason, German Nazis decided to take his life and incarcerate him along with his family in this concentration camp to kill him. Mam głębokie poczucie, że szedłem dzisiaj w marszu pamięci także takich właśnie polskich obywateli jak on. W ich imieniu, bo z różnych przyczyn dzisiaj być ich tutaj nie może. Dlatego, że zginęli zamordowani przez Niemców, dlatego, że po prostu odeszli i nie ma ich już dzisiaj z nami. Tym bardziej drogocenna jest obecność wszystkich ocalałych. And when I was walking here in this march, in this march uh, of the living, I also had a very deep sense that I was representing all the Polish citizens just like him, just like Mr. Edward Mosberg because many of them could not be here today for many different reasons. Some of them were murdered by the Germans, others passed away and they could not be here with us anymore. That is why the presence of all the survivors is even more valuable for us today. Dziękuję panu przewodniczącemu Marszu Żywych i pani prezes Marszu Żywych, że w swoich wystąpieniach na początku marszu i tutaj wspomnieli o rosyjskiej napaści na Ukrainę, o cierpieniu dzisiaj ukraińskiego narodu i o tym, że są dzisiaj z nami tutaj nasi goście z Ukrainy, ale tak naprawdę uchodźcy, ci, którzy uciekli przed wojną, przed śmiercią z rąk rosyjskich najeźdźców. Thank you very much to you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much to you, Madam President of the March of the Living, for mentioning in your speeches, both those at the beginning of today's event, as well as here, just a couple of minutes ago, about Russian aggression against Ukraine, about suffering of the Ukrainian nation, 
Uh, we have them with us here today, guests from Ukraine, but as a matter of fact, they are refugees, refugees who fled war, who fled death from the hands of Russian invaders. Mówię o tym, dlatego że to jest nie tylko wojna. Mówię o tym, bo przecież zawsze powtarzamy, że potępiamy wszelką nienawiść, że jesteśmy w marszu żywych i upamiętniamy pamięć ofiar Holokaustu po to, by nigdy więcej na świecie nic takiego się nie zdarzyło. And I'm saying this because this is not only the war. Uh, we always keep repeating that we condemn all forms of hatred, uh, that we march in this March of the Living, commemorating the victims of the Holocaust, just to make sure that it never happens again in the world. Mówimy o tym wszyscy z głębokim przekonaniem i wiemy doskonale, że tamta straszliwa zbrodnia, niewyobrażalna, wzięła się z nienawiści, nienawiści zaszczepionej narodowi, narodowi niemieckiemu. And we are saying with deep conviction, and we know perfectly well, that that horrendous, that horrible crime of the Holocaust stemmed from hatred, hatred that originated or was imposed onto the German nation. Narodowi o przecież wielkiej kulturze i wielkiej historii. Trudno sobie to w ogóle wyobrazić. A nation of great culture and grand history. This is hard to imagine at all. Tak samo dzisiaj z niedowierzaniem słuchamy i czytamy stenogramy rozmów, jakie prowadzą zwykli Rosjanie ze swoimi krewnymi żołnierzami walczącymi na Ukrainie w związku z rosyjską napaścią, w związku z rosyjską agresją. And also today, it fills us with disbelief when we listen to or we read the conversations between Russians, Russian soldiers fighting in Ukraine with their relatives back in Russia. All those conversations which are connected with Russian aggression, with Russian invasion of Ukraine. To są rozmowy zwykłych ludzi i w tych rozmowach przebija nienawiść. Często pojawiają się stwierdzenia, że trzeba wytępić Ukraińców. And those are the conversations of ordinary people, led among ordinary people. But what you hear first and foremost in those conversations is hatred. Quite often you can hear statements that the Ukrainian people have to be wiped out. Trudno to w ogóle zrozumieć i trudno w to w ogóle uwierzyć. Jak można po czymś takim, co przeżył naród żydowski, po czymś takim, co przeżyły w czasie II wojny światowej inne narody, Polacy, Romowie, Sinti, Rosjanie także i, że dzisiaj można zachować się w ten sposób, że dzisiaj po tym, jak tyle razy tutaj rosyjscy przywódcy przemawiali dumni z tego, że Armia Czerwona wyzwoliła obóz Auschwitz, że mogli zbombardować Babi Jar, miejsce kaźni, ukraińskich Żydów w czasie II wojny światowej, gdzie dzisiaj spoczywają dziesiątki tysięcy pomordowanych. Tam spadły rosyjskie bomby. Jak to możliwe? And it is really hard to understand. It is hard to believe um, after everything that uh, the Jewish nation has gone through, after all that other nations went through in the Second World War, nations such as Poles, Roma, Sinti, but also Russians, it is so hard to believe that somebody can behave in such a way today. Russian leaders spoke many times here. They expressed their pride that the Red Army liberated Auschwitz-Birkenau concentration camp. And after all that, Drop, uh, bombs have been dropped on Babin Yar, uh, the place of torment of thousands of Ukrainian Jews, the place where their remains are laid to rest. Tens of thousands of people were murdered there. How is that possible at all? Przychodzimy tutaj w to miejsce, idziemy w tym marszu po to, by uczcić pamięć, oddać hołd pomordowanym ale tak, żeby pokazać, że państwo Izraeli, naród żydowski nie tylko istnieje, ale ma prawo do istnienia. 
And we come here, we come to this place, we walk in the March of the Living to commemorate those murdered, also to pay tribute to those murdered, but also to show in a very clear way that the state of Israel and the Israeli nation still exist, and even more to say, they have got the right to exist. Przychodzimy tutaj po to, żeby pokazać, że o ile w czasie II wojny światowej Niemcom hitlerowskim udało się zetrzeć mój kraj, Polskę z mapy, wymazać ją i mordować Polaków, także Żydów polskich, nigdy więcej nie dopuścimy, by coś takiego tutaj się powtórzyło. Właśnie dlatego dbamy o to miejsce pamięci. And we come here to show that unlike in the Second World War, where Nazi Germans just wiped out Polish people, the inhabitants of my country, Poland, they just wiped it out from the map. Then they murdered Poles, also Polish Jews. But we come here exactly to show that it is never, ever going to happen again, that we are never going to allow it happening. Jesteśmy dzisiaj tutaj także po to, aby pokazać że absolutnie nie ma zgody wobec próby odebrania wolności i bezkarnego zabijania narodu ukraińskiego, tak jak to się dzisiaj dzieje na okupowanych terenach Ukrainy. And exactly for that reason we are taking care in Poland of sites such as this. But also we are here to show and to demonstrate that it is unacceptable to us that freedom should be taken away from the Ukrainian nation, that members of the Ukrainian nation should be killed with impunity in the occupied territories of Ukraine. Jesteśmy tutaj, żeby pokazać, że każdy naród ma święte prawo do życia, ma święte prawo do kultywowania swoich tradycji, ma święte prawo do rozwoju. And we are here to show that every single nation has got a sacred right to life. Every single nation has got a sacred life to cultivate their traditions and to develop. I krzyczymy głośno. Nie dla nienawiści. Nie dla antysemityzmu. Nie dla antyukrainizmu. Nie dla antypolonizmu. Nie dla nienawiści. And we shout out loud here, no to hatred, no to anti-Semitism, no to anti-Ukrainism, no to anti-Polonism, no to hatred. Nigdy się z tym nie pogodzimy, nigdy się z tym nie zgodzimy i zawsze będziemy zwalczać to ze wszystkich sił. We will never come to terms with that, we are never going to agree to that, and we are always going to fight with all the might we have in order to counter it. Kto tego nie rozumie, dlatego nie ma miejsca w społeczności międzynarodowej uczciwych państw i narodów. And who does not understand that, that entity, that person has no place among international community of honest people and honest nations. Kto morduje, kto łamie prawo międzynarodowe, musi za to ponieść twardą i bezwzględną odpowiedzialność. The one who murders, the one who violates international law has to be brought to accountability for that and has to accept severe punishment. Nigdy więcej wojny, nigdy więcej holokaustu, wieczna pamięć pomordowanym. Never again, excuse me, never again war, never again holocaust. May the memory of those murdered live on eternally. Wieczna pamięć wszystkim ofiarom nienawiści. May the memory of all the victims of hatred live on eternally. Please turn your attention to the screen for a short message from the President of the State of Israel, President Isaac Yitzhak Herzog. Dear friends, Achayot v'achim yakarim, three years ago I was here, leading the delegation of the Jewish Agency for Israel. I marched alongside Jews and non-Jews to remember the millions murdered in the Shoah. We marched to salute the martyrs of the Holocaust and the uprisings. 
we march to commemorate the righteous amongst the nations, those who risked their lives for ours. We march to honor the sheer heroism and perseverance of the precious survivors. We marched and we cried, and we cried and we cried. For the past two years, we took a step back from the hall. We grieved in our homes and connected through screens and Zooms. But today, thank God, I speak to you from Jerusalem, the capital of the Jewish Democratic State of Israel, when you are there in the camp marching again. We march to mourn, to remember, and to declare that the death marches of 80 years ago will never happen again and will never be forgotten. The March of the Living is far more than a symbolic gesture. Commemorating the Holocaust is the duty of every person, of every nation across the globe, and it is our generation's obligation to deeply, existentially remember is to act on behalf of those who cannot. It is to speak up against anti-Semitism, hatred, bigotry, or racism. It is to align our moral compass, to insert compassion, tzedakah chesed, and to see the image of God in every human being. The State of Israel, established in the wake of the Holocaust, as a guarantee that the Jewish people always have a home, will act to ensure Jews will never again be refugees. We will exert every effort to enable every single Jew in the world to live a proud, free, safe Jewish life. We will combat the trivialization of the truth and prevent alternative facts from replacing history. We will not allow the world to forget the depth of human cruelty executed by the Nazis and their collaborators. And we will march again next year May we all succeed in passing the torch to the next generations. And allow me, dear friends, to thank the President of Poland, Mr. Duda, and his government, as well as the leadership of the organization from all over the world, the March of the Living Organization, as well as the leadership from Israel. Some of our friends, unfortunately, have left us this year, including the founder, Abraham Herzog but our spirit goes on. May we all march together and then again, again and again and continue to say, Am Israel Chai. Thank you. Vehi She'amda is an ancient Hebrew prayer sung every Passover Seder. It states that in each generation the enemies of the Jewish people seek their demise but affirms that God ultimately foils their plans. In one famous instance told by a survivor on the March of the Living on a cold December New Year's Eve when oppressed Jewish camp inmates were ordered by their sadistic Nazi camp guard to dance and sing, they chose to sing these words in Hebrew, a brave act of defiance during these darkest of days. The melody written by Jonathan Razel has made this among the most well-known songs in Israel and around the world. The song will be performed by acclaimed Israeli singers representing the third generation, Har El Skat and Yonatan Razel. Shalom, 
גם עומד עלינו לכלותנו. והיא שעמד על אבותינו, והיא שעמד על אבותינו ולנו, שלא אחד בלבד עומד עלינו לכלותנו, עומד עלינו לכלותנו. והקדוש ברוך הוא מצילנו, מצילנו מאדם. והקדוש ברוך הוא יצילנו, יצילנו מאדם. והיא שעמדה לאבותינו, והיא שעמדה לאבותינו ולנו, שלא אחד בלבד עמד עלינו לכלותינו, עמד עלינו לכלותינו, והקדוש ברוך הוא מצילנו, מצילנו מידם, והקדוש ברוך הוא יצילנו, יצילנו מידם. או שלא אחד בלבד עמד עלינו והקדוש ברוך הוא מצילנו, הקדוש ברוך הוא מצילנו הקדוש ברוך הוא מצילנו, מצילנו מידיו. הקדוש ברוך הוא יצילנו, יצילנו I am honored to invite the Honorable Mayor of Jerusalem, Mr. Moshe Leon, to the stage. Mr. Leon's family roots are from the city of Salonika in Greece. Part of his family was murdered in the Holocaust here in Auschwitz. Moshe has held many senior positions in Israeli society and today he comes here as the head of the Jerusalem delegation, representing the capital of the State of Israel.
ניצולות וניצולי השואה, נשיאת מצעד החיים, הגברת פיליס היידמן, יושב ראש מצעד החיים, דוקטור שמואל רוזנמן, יושב ראש קרן הקיימת לישראל, מר אברהם דובדבני, משתתפי מצעד החיים מישראל ומהעולם, משלחת ירושלים היקרה, אזרחיות ואזרחי מדינת ישראל, מכובדיי כולם. לפני שבעים ותשע שנים, בחמישה עשר במרץ, יצא הטרנספורט הראשון של יהודים משכונת הברון הירש בסלוניקי אל אושוויץ בירקנאו. במשך חמישה חודשים, ממרץ ועד אוגוסט, יצאו הטרנספורטים מסלוניקי, שקראו לה אז ירושלים של הבלקן, ומקהילות יהודיות נוספות ביוון לאושוויץ. תשעה עשר משלוחים בלבד הספיקו לנאצים כדי לחסל את יהדות סלוניקי. תשעים אחוז מיהודי יוון הומתו כאן במחנות ההשמדה. מזל טוב פסח לבית עזרתי. סבתא רבתא שלי, הסבתא של אבי, שלום ליאון, שייבדל לחיים ארוכים וטובים, שזכיתי שהוא נמצא איתנו כאן היום. <אז> בנה של הסבתא, הרופא מיכאל פסח, שצעד יחד עם מטופליו לגי ההריגה, ובתו דייזי נספו כאן, כאן באושוויץ בירקנאו. האם הסבתא שרדה את המסע? שבעה ימים בקרונות בקר דחוסים. האם ליוו אותה נכדתה ובנה בדרכה האחרונה? האם היו על הרכבת שהגיע מסלוניקי היום לפני שבעים ותשע שנים, ב-28 לאפריל. אלף תשע מאות ארבעים ושלוש מתוכה נשלחו. אלפיים חמש מאות ארבעים ותשעה יהודים מיידית לתאי הגזים. אנחנו לעולם לא נדע. אנחנו אפילו לא יודעים את היום שבו הם הלכו לעולמם. את שערי רצון להיפתח, יום אהיה חפאי לאל שוטח. אנא זכור נא לי ביום אוכח, עוקד והנעקד והמזבח. את הפיוט הזה אומרים יהודי יוון וארצות המזרח בראש השנה, לפני תקיעת שופר וקריאת שערי שמיים. פיוט זה, שהוא מתאר את הרגע הנורא של העקדה, קיבל משמעות אחרת אחרי השואה. קהילות יוצאי יוון קראו אותו כאילו נכתב עליהם, על עקדת בני משפחותיהם, על אובדן קהילותיהם. ואני לא יכול לשכוח את זקני הקהילה ממררים בבכי. הבן אשר ילדה לתשעים שנה היה לאש ולמאכלת מנה. אנה אבקש לה מנחם אנה. עין במר בוכה ולב שומח עוקד והנעקד והמזבח. ברגעים האלה אינני יכול שלא להזכיר לצד בני משפחתי גם את בני משפחתה של רעייתי היקרה שיושבת כאן עמנו סתווית שנספו גם הם באושוויץ פנחס, שרה, מלכה ובנה, 
שאת שמו אנחנו לא יודעים למשפחת אוסט. סב, סבתא רבתא אטל נפטרה במסע הבחירה וכן סבתא ציפורה לרר. מכובדיי, מסילת הברזל הזו שמאחורינו עליה אנחנו עומדים כעת תחת הרכבת, תחנת הרכבת אושוויץ, הייתה בתקופת האביב 1944 תחנת הרכבת העמוסה ביותר באירופה. ומי שעומד כאן על מסילת הרכבת הארורה הזו יכול כמעט לשמוע ולדמיין את בכי האימהות שילדיהן נקרעו מזרועותיהן, את נביחות הכלבים, את הסלקציה הארורה לחיים או למוות, את הפקודות מקפיאות הדם של השומרים, שנל, מהר. אנחנו איננו ממהרים. אנחנו עם זוכר וזיכרוננו לנצח. נזכור את העמלק הנאצי. נזכור את אלה שעמדו מן הצד. לא נסלח לאלה שראו את עשן הארובות, שמעו את הזעקות ולא נקפו אצבע. אני עומד כאן היום, ביום הזיכרון לשואה ולגבורה, כראש העיר ירושלים, בירת מדינת ישראל ובירת העם היהודי. אנחנו עם שנולד בצו לך לך. הרגע צעדנו במצעד החיים והכרזנו כולנו הננו כאן. לא, לא צעדנו מאושוויץ אחד לאושוויץ שתיים. לא צעדנו מאושוויץ לבירקנאו. צעדנו מן השואה אל התקומה. צעדנו מאושוויץ לירושלים. כל פסיעה במצעד היא צעד חשוב ומרגש בהיסטוריה של העם היהודי. למרות האנטישמיות שמנסה להרים את ראשה גם בימינו. למרות טרור הפיגועים הרצחניים והניסיונות לערער את שלום ירושלים בירת ישראל. אנחנו העם היהודי נמשיך לצעוד כעם חופשי בארצנו ארץ ציון וירושלים. נמשיך לבנות ולפתח את ירושלים כעיר של שלום, עיר של תקווה, עיר של עתיד. אני רוצה ברשותכם לפנות אליך, אבא, אבא. הניצב כאן איתי כסלע איתן, כחלק משרשרת הדורות. ניצלנו מהשואה, אבא, ניצלנו מהשואה בזכות ירושלים. בזכות אביך, סבא משה ליאון, שאני אקרא על שמו, שהחזיק אותך בזרועותיו כתינוק קטן, ועלה יחד איתך ועם סבתא ועם אחיך כשהוא חולם על ירושלים. והנה אני עומד כאן היום גאה ונרגש כראש העיר ירושלים, בירת העם היהודי ובירת ישראל בראש משלחת ירושלים. אבא, עיניך הרעות, הרוח היהודית והתפילות לירושלים הן המנצחות הגדולות של ההיסטוריה. הן אשר ממשיכות להתקיים ולהתחזק. כמו משפחתנו, כמו העם הכל כך מיוחד שזכינו להיות חלק ממנו, וכמו העיר המיוחדת ירושלים. אבא, כבנך, כאב לנכדיך וכסבא לניניך, יחד איתך ויחד עם כל הנוכחים כאן, 
נכריז באוזני סבתא שלך מזל טוב פסח לבית עזרתי השם ינקום דמה ושאר כל הקדושים לעולם לא נשכח We will never forget ירושלים היא הלב שלנו Jerusalem is the heart of each and every one of us אם אשכחך ירושלים תשכח ימיני יתגדל ויתקדש מרבה עם ישראל חי I would now like to invite to the stage a member of the second generation, Rabbi Moshe Lau. Rabbi Lau is named after his grandfather, the last chief rabbi of Piotrkov, Poland, who was murdered in the Holocaust. His father, Rabbi Israel Meir Lau, the former chief rabbi of the State of Israel and child survivor of the Holocaust, participated in every march of the Living Program since its inception in 1988. ושאל שאלה. זו הייתה פרשת השבוע, פרשת בשלח, והיא מסתיימת במילים מלחמה להשם בעמלק מדור דור. ואבא שאל, אני לא מבין את הפסוק הזה. הרי הפסוק הזה בעצם מצווה עלינו ציווי ללחום בעמלק. והיה ונניח שאני אצליח לזהות את האיש שהרג את אבא שלי בטרבלינקה. שהרג את אימא שלי ברוונספריק, שהרג את אחי שמואל יצחק השם יקום דמו, גם הוא בטרבלינקה. אני ארצה להרוג אותו, לעשות לו אני לא יודע מה. האם אני אוכל? יש להניח שאם אעשה זאת, יעמידו אותי למשפט. ואם כן, איך התורה, תורת חיים, מצווה עלינו משהו שהוא לא מציאותי? להילחם בעמלק? והתשובה היא, מלחמה להשם בעמלק איך וכיצד? מדור דור. להמשיך את הדורות. מה רצה עמלק? הוא רצה לעצור את העם היהודי. הוא רצה לעצור את תורת ישראל. רצה לבלום את כל המשמעות של המושג יהודי בכל צורה שהיא. ולכן אני מצווה להילחם בו איך? על ידי המשך שלשלת הדורות. לא לעצור חלילה וחס כאן, אלא להמשיך הלאה. המלחמה שלי היא בהעמדת הדורות. כך אנחנו מנצחים. כשאנחנו נדברים היום, ולפני רגע דיבר קודמי, ראש עיריית ירושלים, בשם ציבור רחב של אנשים הנמצא כאן איתו, כדי להעלות על נס את ירושלים עיר הנצח, והנצח זו ירושלים כפי שאומרת הגמרא, אנחנו מדברים פה על נצחיותו של העם היהודי. את זה עמלק דאז ועמלק של הדור האחרון לפני שמונים שנה רצה להחריד. המוטל והמצווה עלינו הוא לא לתת לזממו חלילה להיות. ירושלים על בתי המדרש שבה, הלומדי התורה שבה, ירושלים על אלפי רבבות ומאות אלפי תושביה. כמו גם ארץ ישראל כולה, הם הסמל לנצחיות של העם היהודי. כמי שעומד כאן כרגע על בימה זאת, בן לאב שמלווה אותנו זה למעלה משלושים ושתיים שנה כאן במצעד החיים, וגם היום הוא בוודאי רצה להשתתף, רק טכנית הוא לא היה יכול, אני מרגיש חובה להעלות על נס את מה שהזכיר פה המנחה. היה יהודי בשם הרב משה חיים לאו, רבה של העיר פיוטריקוב. הוא נספה יחד עם שלושים אלף מיהודי העיר בחודש חשוון תש"ג, סוף שנת ארבעים ושתיים. לכאורה היטלר ניצח, אבל הנה קם לו חותר מגזע ישי, וכשאני היום כבר אב וסב לנכדים, לומדי תורה, תושבי ארץ ישראל וירושלים בכללה, אני רואה לנגד עיניי את נצח ישראל לא ישקר ולא ינחם. כמו קודמיי, אני אוסיף ואומר, 
עם ישראל, עם הנצח חי. All too often, as the world burns and innocent people perish, the rest of humanity stands by and does not intervene. The Yiddish song, Es Brent, It Burns, was written by Mordechai Gebertik in response to a 1936 pogrom in the Polish town of Pshitik. In June 1942, Gebertik was murdered by German soldiers. Es Brent will be sung by Lieutenant Colonel Shai Abramson, the chief cantor of the IDF and representative cantor for the State of Israel. He will be accompanied by Gal Liberson. I would now like to invite to the stage Mr. Avraham Duvdevani, past chairman of the World Zionist Organization and currently chairman of the Jewish National Fund, Keren Kayemet Israel. Mr. Duvdevani, Bevakasha. Kufa Kasha Zu, Shaolam of Ber. בהתנהגות האנושית שבה ומזכירה לנו את משמעותה וחשיבותה של מדינת ישראל כמדינה של העם היהודי. 
לפני 80 שנה לא הייתה לעם היהודי מדינה שתשמור ותגן על היהודים באשר הם יהודים בכל אתר בתפוצות, שלא תיתן לפגוע בהם לרעה ושלא יבוא עליהם כל פגע. אנו במצעדנו היום שבים ומזכירים זאת. אנו מעלים על נס את הקשר הבלתי ניתן לניתוק בין העם היהודי למדינת היהודים, בין העם היהודי למולדתו לארץ ישראל. הקרן הקיימת לישראל המציינת השנה 120 ליסודה על ידי בנימין זאב הרצל בקונגרס הציוני החמישי, משתתפת במצעד זה ונושאת בו זיכרון נצח לאותם מיליוני נספים שנהרגו, שנשחטו ושנשרפו חיים, ובתוכם מאות אלפי ישראל אשר נשאו בליבם במשך כל חייהם כיסופים למולדת ושותפות בגאולת ארץ ישראל. אותם מאות אלפים אשר בתוך זוועות הגטו לא חדלו לשלשל את המטבעות המעטים שהיו בידיהם כתרומה שבועית לקופסה הכחולה, הפישקה, אותה קופסה אשר באמצעות המטבעות הדלות ששלשלו לתוכה ביטאה את אשר רחש ליבם של התורמים לגאולת ארץ ישראל ויישובה. הקופסה השרופה הזאת, אשר אני נושא עימי במצעד זה, היא קופסה כחולה, פישקה, שנמצאה בתוך חורבות גטו ורשה, אוד מוצל מאש, והיא עדות אילמת לפועלם של רבבות אלפי ישראל, אשר נשאו את דגל הציונות, אותם פעילים אשר לא זכו להגשים את כיסופיהם והם עלו איתם השמיימה בשרפה הגדולה וכיסופים של אלה הפכו לצוואה לנותרים לשרידים ולניצולים לממש הם את כיסופי הנספים לעלייה ליישוב הארץ זכותם של אחינו אלה עמדה לנו בהקמת תקומת ישראל בארצו, להקמת מדינה יהודית שתהיה חזקה, מאוחדת, מרכז ובית לכל יהודי, מקן לכל יהודי בכל אתר ואתר, ושתבטיח שלעולם לא עוד. במצעד זה אנו מעלים את זכרם, ומצעדנו יראים אנחנו פה. לקיום צוואתם ומורשתם, כמו סיסמה יהיה מדור לדור עד עולם. I have made a vow to remember everything and not forget a thing. These are the last lines of the poem Haneder, the vow, written by famed Israeli poet Avraham Shlonsky. The melody was written by Israeli composer David Zahavi and will be sung for us today by Harel Skat. השכול ועמסו זה הכות על ליבי השחור על דעת רחמי שהורו לי למחול עד שבאו ימים שאיימו לי לסלוח אל 
על דעת עיניי שראו את השכול ועמסו זה הכל על ליבי השכוח על דעת רחמי שהורו לי למחול עד שבאו ימים שאיימו בי לסלוח נדעתי הנדר לזכור את הכל לזכור ודבר לא לשכוח נדעתי הנדר לזכור את הכל לזכור ודבר לא לשכוח דבר לא לשכוח אדום עשירי עד שוך עלבוני עד כולם עד כולם עד יחולו כל שבטי מוסרי עד שבאו ימים שאיימו מלסלוח נדעתי הנדר לזכור את הכל לזכור ודבר לא לשכוח נדעתי הנדר לזכור את הכל לזכור ודבר לא לשכוח קונם עם יריק לעבור ליל הזעם, כל עמים בבוקר אחזור לסורים, ומאום לא אלמד גם עדי יחולו כל שבטי מוסרי עד שבאו ימים שאיימו מלסלוח נדעתי הנדר לזכור את הכל לזכור ודבר לא לשכוח נדעתי הנדר לזכור את הכל לזכור ודבר לא לשכוח לזכור ודבר לא לשכוח When oppressed communities stand united to com combat injustice and intolerance, remarkable results can ensue, as the moving video you are about to see illustrates. The video will conclude with remarks from Mr. Robert Kraft, founder of the Foundation to Combat Antisemitism and Together Beat Hate Initiative, a movement that encourages young people of all backgrounds to join the fight against all forms of hatred, a movement that the International March of the Living is proud to endorse. In 1945, Allied forces, including American soldiers, liberated hundreds of Nazi concentration camps spread across Europe. African American soldiers were among the American liberators. When the soldiers entered the camps, they were not prepared for what they saw. We were coming down this road through a forest and the open field and the big fence and a gate. I told the driver to go through the gate and we went and knocked the gate down and went into the camp. I was sitting up in my tent, you know, looking at it because I didn't even know what it was until one of my uh, platoon came up and said, Sarge, do you know what this is? I said, no. He said, they said this is a concentration camp. 
I just I just stared with my mouth open because I did. They didn't look human, to be honest with you. But I'll never forget the black soldiers sitting on the turret, and they were absolutely horrified. I'll never forget their eyes were like saucers because what they saw here was something that they would have never seen under any battlefield conditions. Had they been hours later or days later, many more of us would not have made it, and I'll be forever grateful to them. I'm ever I seen a black person. I never seen one before. And he came right front of me and gave me the bicycle and the big bag of chocolate. I think this was the first time I was happy in many, many, many years. But to see what you see these people to be treated like that and human and we you know you figure you only thought about slavery doing to black people. And I thought, I didn't think that was, something like that would happen today. I didn't know that, that the Germans were that evil to want to do this to people. Black and white American soldiers both fought to liberate Europe from Nazi Germany. Upon returning from the war, Black soldiers once again were met with segregation and racial inequality. Historians contend World War II and the heroic role played by black soldiers proved to be a turning point in the fight for racial justice in the United States. It contributed to the rise of the civil rights movement of the 1950s and 60s. We will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spirit. Many American Jews actively participated in the civil rights movement. They saw it as a requirement of their faith and culture. I was the rabbi of the Jewish community in Berlin, the most shameful and the most tragic problem is silence. America must not become a nation of onlookers. The fate of Jews and black Americans once again became intertwined, both risking their lives in the fight for justice. When Martin Luther King led the march from Selma to Montgomery in 1965 to protest racial injustice, he was joined marching arm in arm by Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel. Heschel believed the biblical prophets demanded he advocate for justice for his black brothers and sisters. He later wrote, when I marched in Selma, my feet were praying. Courage in the face of evil, love in the face of hate, justice in the face of prejudice and intolerance. Let us honor their legacy. Today, we reflect on the historical significance of Jewish and black communities working together to fight against racism and human rights atrocities. Jewish, Christian, or Muslim, black, brown, or white, our own people or that of any other nationality in any other country. We recognize the importance of working together to stand up against all injustices. We must do what we can to help those in need, as many are doing now, to provide humanitarian aid to the millions of Ukrainian refugees and the millions more who are fighting to defend their freedom. We must never be indifferent to the suffering of others. As we mark Holocaust Remembrance Day with the March of Living here in Auschwitz, Birkenau, and as we pass the torch of remembrance from one generation to the next, let us recommit ourselves to the fight for equality for all. For as Martin Luther King so powerfully reminded us, injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere.
Thank you for attending today's march. You each have a role to play, and together we can beat hate. Six commemorative Holocaust torches will now be lit as the melody from Schindler's List will be played in tribute to the courage of the righteous among the nations. The first torch represents our solidarity with victims of anti-Semitism. It will be lit by Mr. Michael Siegel, Chairman of the Board of Governors of the Jewish Agency and past Board Chair of Israel Bonds, the Cleveland Jewish Federation and the Jewish Federations of North America. He will be joined by two Jewish people deeply affected by anti-Semitic violence. Miri Ben Ze'ev Koren, the widow of Foreign Ministry envoy Eli Ben Ze'ev, Zichron Olivracha, was killed by a suicide bomber outside the Israeli embassy in Buenos Aires in 1992. And Mr. Howard Feinberg, whose mother Joyce was killed in the Tree of Life Synagogue, Pittsburgh shooting in 2019. So I wish to thank the entire March of the Living organization for inviting me. As chairman of the board of governors of the Jewish Agency for Israel, I, Michael Siegel, along with my friends, am privileged, humbled, and honored to light this torch in solidarity with all the victims of anti-Semitism around the world. As instances of anti-Semitism keep increasing globally, the Jewish Agency's role in championing our shared Jewish story and connecting Jews to each other and to the Jewish nation, the State of Israel, is as important as ever. May all continue to keep the memories of the Holocaust and its victims alive and speak up against anti-Semitism wherever and whenever we see it to ensure that nothing like the Shoah ever happens again. Thank you. The second torch will be lit by Eitan Naishlos and His Excellency Ahmed Obeid Al-Mansouri. This torch represents the hope of the third generation and new alliances to promote tolerance between different faiths. Eitan Naishlos, one of the Jewish world's youngest leaders, is the president and founder of the Naishlos Foundation, which advocates for Israel, combats anti-Semitism, and provides Holocaust education. He is a member of the third generation, grandson of Holocaust survivor, Tamara Zisserman, Zichron Alivracha, and he is joined on the march with his parents, Hannah and Hanoch Naishlos. His Excellency Ahmad Obaid Al-Mansouri is from the United Arab Emirates. He is the founder of the Crossroads of Civilizations Museum, as well as founder of the first Holocaust Memorial Gallery in the Arab and Muslim world. I, Eitan Ashlos, son of Hanoch and Hana, representing the third generation, stand here at these gates of hell and light a torch of remembrance, a torch of hope, carrying this torch forward for the next generation. I stand here in memory of the members of my own family, from both my mother's and father's sides, who perished in the flames of the Holocaust. I stand here, the grandson of a Holocaust survivor, Tamara Zisserman, of blessed memory, whose story and memories we discovered after her death in this very shoebox. Memories which I carry with me today. My grandmother was saved because of the sacrifice of a Christian family, the Chodoseviches. They chose not to be bystanders to inhumanity. They chose to be upstanders. And for their bravery, they paid with their lives. So, as I light this torch, the torch of the third generation, 
I take responsibility for passing the flame of memory. I call on my generation, the generation of the grandchildren, the third generation. Do not be bystanders to history. Do not turn a blind eye to hatred. Do not be silent in the face of evil. Be upstanding. Be strong, be courageous wherever racism or bigotry are found. It is now on us. It is incumbent on us, incumbent upon our generation and all generations to come to keep their memories alive. To the millions of souls lost in this unfathomable human atrocity, this is my solemn pledge. Never means never. Never again. Never forget. Together with my brother, His Excellency Ahmed Al Mansouri of the United Arab Emirates, founder of the first Holocaust Memorial Gallery in the Arabic and Islamic world. We are lighting this torch today together. Just over one year after the Abraham Accords were signed, sending a message to our peoples, to our countries, to our region, to our world. We are standing strong and united against hate in all its forms. May this be the message that our generation sends far and wide of what we can achieve when we work together. May this be our legacy, a legacy of solidarity, a legacy of hope. Al tira mi pachat pitom u meshuat reshaim kitavo. Proverbs 3 25. Be not afraid of sudden terror or of the darkness of the wicked when it will come. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Shalom. My dearest brothers and sisters. My dearest brothers and sisters from children of Abraham, from the Jewish, the Christians, the Muslims. My dearest human brothers from all other beliefs. Your Excellencies, our dearest, sincere dearest, the survivors who are living with us, who are with us here today, thank you very much for giving me the privilege to be here with you today. And please allow me to speak in Arabic. I'll do my speech in Arabic. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa bihi nasta'in wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-anbiya'i wa al-mursaleen Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa al-anbiya'i ajma'in. Amma ba'd, aqifu huna. بين يديكم أنا العبد لله أحمد عبيد المنصوري كمسلم مؤمن خادما متواضعا لربه ومتبعا مخلصا لكتاب الله الكريم القرآن الكريم وسنة نبي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم أقف هنا اليوم جنبا إلى جنب مع إخوتي وأخواتي اليهود أقف هنا بتفاني لنتحدى كافة أوجه الشر ومع ذلك فأنا أقف بعزم وهنا يحدوني الأمل مدركا أننا نستطيع أن نتغلب على الظلام على ظلام الماضي لضمان مستقبل أفضل يبشر بالخير والرفاه لجميع الشعوب والأمم والبلدان كانت مسارات القطار التي نراها اليوم مفترق طرق للموت ويقف هذا الجيل ويقف هذا الجيل عند نفس مفترق طرق الموت ليختار حماية وحفظ الحياة ومنع وردع حدوث هذه الفضائع مرة أخرى فنحن نختار الحياة إننا كأبناء سيدنا إبراهيم عليه السلام جمعتنا الاتفاقيات الإبراهيمية نقول بملء فمنا لن تعود هذه الفضائع مرة أخرى لن تعود أبدا أبدا يعني أبدا أبدا يعني أبدا نرجو أن تكون ذكرى ضحايا الهولوكوست درس وعظة وعبرة لنا لمستقبل أفضل مصداقا لقولي سبحانه وتعالى عن النفس ومن أحياها فكأنما أحيا الناس جميعا 
والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته شلون لولام لا أود أبدا يعني أبدا أبدا يعني أبدا Never means never. The third torch will be lit in honor of the righteous among the nations who risked and sometimes sacrificed their lives to save Jewish life during the Holocaust. This torch will be lit by Roman Gawel and Peter Borek, leadership of the Shalom Ministry Association in Oswenzen, Poland, who have participated in the March of the Living for over 20 years. They are actively involved in the rescue of refugees from war-ravaged war Ukraine, including Holocaust survivors. They will be accompanied by one Ukrainian refugee they helped rescue, Vladislava Podlipska. We light this torch in honor of the righteous amongst the nations who risk and often sacrifice their lives to save Jewish life during the Holocaust. May their courageous actions inspire all of us. The fourth torch will be lit by students from Austria, Germany, Lithuania, Belgium, Hungary and Poland. The torch will be lit in memory of the one and a half million innocent Jewish children murdered in the Shoah. As they come to the stage, we will screen a short video featuring students and survivors representing our March of the Living delegations around the world who, while not able to join us this year in person, are nevertheless symbolically marching in solidarity with us today. Basing our words on the pledge of young marchers who came before us, we vow to be builders of the future, not victims of the past. And here today, we pledge to stand tall in the face of bigotry, raise our voice against anti-Semitism, speak out against racism, and commit to loving all our neighbors as ourselves. This is our pledge to the past, to our generation, and to those in the future. Maybe we worth of our promise. Thank you. The fifth torch will be lit in honor of all those who fought for freedom during World War II. The torch will be lit by members of the Israeli Knesset, Israel's parliament. I would like to call on Chavret Knesset Yasmin Friedman and Chaver Knesset Mufid Mari to light the torch. אנו גאים להדליק לפיד זה בשם כנסת ישראל לזכר קורבנות השואה ולהבטיח לעולם לא עוד. תודה רבה. The sixth and final torch will be lit in honor of the state of Israel. the hope and future of the Jewish people. It will be lit by Avraham Duvdevani, chairman of Keren Kemedli Israel, the Jewish National Fund. I, Avraham Duvdevani, board chairman of Keren Kemedli Israel, Jewish National Fund, am privileged and honored to light this torch in honor of the 74th Independence Day 
of the state of Israel. I lie for Israel's prosperity and development and to mark 120 years since the establishment of Karen Kemet Israel, JNF, which has built over 1,000 communities in our country, many of them for the absorption and honor of the Holocaust survivors who survived the inferno and fought for our independence. We also recognize and pay the tribute to the supporters and friends of Karen Kayemet Israel, JNF, in Israel and through the world who are partners in our daily activities in building and developing our beloved state of Israel. El Malay Rachamim, the traditional Jewish prayer for our departed ancestors, will be recited by Lieutenant Colonel Shai Abramson, who will immediately then follow with our mourners Kaddish. Please rise. El Malay Shochen Ebameromi Dayan Almanot Vavi Yetomi Hametzem Enuchan Echona Al kanefei ashechina b'malot kedoshim u'tehorim kezor haraki. Shemot <laughs> Shall we 
בעלמא דברה חירותיו ימליך מלכותיו יצמח פורקניו יקרב משיחי בחיי חון ובימי חון ובחיי דכל בית ישראל בעגלה ובזמן קריב וימרו אמן יהא שמי רבה מברך לעולם ולעלמי עלמיה יתברך וישתבח ויתפאר ויתרומם ויתנשא ויתהדר ויתעלה ויתעלל שמי דקודשה בריחו לעילה מכל ברכתה ושירתה תושבחתה ונחמתה דמירן בעלמה וימרו אמן יהא של אמר רבה מן שמיה וחיים טובים עלינו ועל כל ישראל וימרו אמן עושה שלום במרומיו הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל וימרו אמן was born in Krakow, Poland in 1926. His entire 13-member family, including his parents and two sisters, were murdered in the Shoah. But miraculously, he survived a ghetto and multiple concentration camps. He has spent his life eloquently sharing his story so that we never, ever forget. And even today, at 96 years of age, he continues to do so. For me, he says, every day is the Holocaust. Please welcome Mr. Omosberg. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and the distinguished guests. As you know, my name is Edward Mossberg. I would like to say something that we talk about happening on the Ukraine. I feel sorry for those people that are being murdered. But we cannot compare 
death to the Holocaust. Holocaust was something completely different. I feel sorry for those people, but this all what I can say, never compare this to Holocaust. I, I am a Holocaust survivor. Unfortunately, all the members of my family were murdered by the Germans during the Holocaust. My grandparents' uncle and then cousin were all murdered by the German in Belzec's extermination camp. My mother was murdered by the German in crematorium number five in Auschwitz. My two sisters were murdered by the German in Stuttgart concentration camp. Those camp, as well as all other concentration camp, an extermination camp in Poland were built by the German on Polish soil. In addition, it is important to know Jews were not the only one murdered at the concentration camp, but anyone, regardless of religion or race, who was against the Nazi party was killed. Now it is 70 seventh anniversary of when my mother, Bronisława Bajla Berta Mosberg, was murdered. Prior to that day, I met my mother at the assembly place in Plaszow, and I gave her a piece of a meat. I put it into the mouth, but she spit it out. <coughs> <laughs> and she said, I cannot swallow this meat because it is tripe, not kosher. And I will not swallow it in memory of her father. The next day she was taken to Auschwitz where she was murdered at the crematorium number five. The concentration came along with all others, one in Poland was built by Germans on Polish soil. We should remember there were no Polish concentration camp or Polish extermination camp. The world should know about the cruelty and atrocity committed by the Germans at those horrific places that they murdered six million Jews and million of other and those concentration camps and extermination camps. Since the Germans built those camps on Polish soil, they should pay for the maintenance of those concentration camps and extermination camps in Poland so that the world will never forget about what happened during the Holocaust. I will never forget or forgive the murder of my mother and the rest of my family and the six million Jews and the millions of others who were murdered by the Germans during the Holocaust. <laughs> How can I forget or forgive the barbaric murder of my family in the Gastenberg? Auschwitz Birkenau, my Dana Gottreblinka. <laughs> to forget or forgive would mean to kill the victims a second time. We could not prevent their first death. We must not allow them to be killed again. We have the right to forgive. Only the dead can forgive. <laughs> <coughs> What happened? This? Mm. 
As long as I live, it is my obligation and duty to tell about the atrocities that were committed on my family and the six million Jews. I want to tell you about my, my wife. I met Cecile in December 1942 in Wielitschka. A group of people was brought to Wielitschka from Krakow ghetto to cleaning after the Jews who were li who lived there and were sent to the extermination camp. Cecile and I were in that group to do the clinic. When the job was finished in Wielitschka, we were brought back to Krakow ghetto. In the ghetto, I sometimes saw Cecile on the street and then later in the concentration camp Plasho. You see, he opens this. I don't know if you can see it. This is a picture that she gave me in 1942, in December 1942. Okay. And I kept those pictures with some other pictures through all the concentration camp. What is <laughs> While we were in Wilitschka, people were sent in pictures, one of another, and Cecile gave me a picture of herself. In 1945, when we were liberated, I was assigned to live in a museum of Hitler's parents in the town called Leonding in Austria. I went back to Mauthausen to look for my family, and I found Cecile. She was laying on the floor in the barrack because she was sick with a typhoid fever. She had no my sister, so I asked her if my sister were there, and she told me they were not. Before I left the barrack, I left Cecile up and put her outside through the window so that she could get a fresh air. I then left and went back where I was living. What is it? Then some, somebody said that there were some survivors from Krakow living in Hanover, Germany. Cecile and other people want to go there but they were afraid to travel such a distance. I took some people, including Cecile, to Hanover to look for a family members. No one was able to find any family members, so we went back to the farmhouse in town of Hart. A while after Cecile and some other people went to Krakow, Poland, Cecile found her father who survived Buchenwald concentration camp. I then decided also go to Krakow, Poland, to look for my two sisters, because I already knew that the rest of my family were murdered by the Germans. Once again, I found Cecile there walking on the street. While I was walking on the street with Cecile, we met a woman and approached her and asked her where she was liberated from. Her answer was Stutkov concentration camp. She told me that my two sisters and my wife's one sister were murdered at Stutkov. One day the German lined up 7,000 people and then shot them with a machine gun. The next day was liberation. <coughs> I knew now my search for my sister was over. <coughs> At that time, I was sick with tuberculosis of lungs and bones. I decided to go to a doctor, and Cecile came with me. The doctor said that I only had a few months to live because there was no medication to cure the illness. It was at that time when I realized that Cecile was interested in me because she went with me to the doctor and tried to encourage me to go to Italy to try to get cured there. 
So in 1946, I went to Italy to several hospitals in the summer. In hospital. In the summer of 1947, I got clean bill of health from the doctor at the tuberculosis disappeared and I went back to Krakow, Poland. Cecile was waiting there for me and that is when I realized that I was interested in her. Cecile and her father decided they want to go to Belgium because they did not want to stay in the communist country. Since I had no one in Poland and I had a passport, I decided to go with them to Belgium. Cecile and I got married on October 26, 1947 in Belgium. And our first daughter was born there. We waited for 18 months until we got our visa to go to the United States. On December 51, we arrived in New York. I was a very rich man at that time. I had my wife, my daughter, and $10 in my pocket. Immediately after it, I started searching for job because I did not want my wife to work. Her job was to, to raise the children. In 2019, I received the Commander's Cross of Order of Merit from the Republic of Poland, awarded from in honor to the Polish President Duda. I was awarded this honor for helping to establish better relations between the Jewish people and Polish people. I was honored to get this and I did not expect something like this to happen. What? 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 I can hear you. Hey, thank you for listening to me. And I just want you to know about the President Duda. I talk him in to come into this march of living. He is a president who is a friend of the Jewish people. He can stand the anti-Semitism and he gave me that medal in honor that I help keep, keep the good relations with, between Poles and the Jewish people. I want to thank you once more, and God bless you all. Thank you. And, okay. The national anthem of Israel, Hatikva, the hope and future of the Jewish people will be sung to conclude this year's ceremony by Mr. Jonathan Razel and Shai Abramson. On the screens behind, you will see dozens of young immigrants who recently escaped the war in Ukraine and have arrived at the Jewish Agency's Carmiel Absorption Center in a special program called Immigrants Forward, as well as those participating in the Jewish Agency's Seller Program comprised of young immigrants from the former Soviet Union. They are singing Hatikva together with us, the anthem of the State of Israel, their new home, as they hope for the safety of their families and friends who are still in the battle zones. Please remain upstanding. Come. 
Cilio Sofia Orlo gentlemen, this concludes the 2022 March of the Living Yom HaShoah ceremony. Thank you all for participating. May you live in peace and find peace. Tzedchem l'shalom.